one of the reasons that companies are moving to the cloud, to cloud computing, is basically um, access to resources on demand. And the pandemic has uh, really increased that requirement because their people aren't in offices. And so they, they don't have access to go install more equipment and stuff like that. That's been largely true over the last couple of years. That may be changing now, depending on geography. But it's also uh, the convenience. You know, even if you have access to install new, uh, you know, new equipment, um, there's typically a very long time frame uh, duration between when you decide you want the equipment and when it's available to be used. And in the context of data warehousing, it's typically driven by needs around, you know, we want to do analytics around some aspect that will improve our business, whether it's responding to customers better, whether it's analyzing customer inquiries about service support, whether it's, um, you know, putting, you know, analyzing how campaigns are performed, whatever it might be, um, you know, th there's typically a desire to do it very quickly. And so that's a, there's an impedance mismatch between that desire to really get started and start understanding the data that's available and the lengthy time frames to get equipment available to put all of that data into and then to run the analytics on. So that's a driver for uh, cloud computing, which is accessibility to um, the equipment or the resources very quickly. Generally, what I would say is that, you know, there are lots of different kinds of use cases and really analytics can be applied across almost any dimension of a business internally around staffing, HR, employee, um, employee relations, around finance and cash management, around your sales activities and what those are like around your marketing. I mean, every dimension Im improves when you can understand it better. Um, one, of the, one of the big things that also is driving a lot of use of analytics is the tremendous growth in data. And that's particularly as we, the, our economy and society has moved online, more, more online, you get information in digital format you know, as a contrast to 20 years ago when you had lots of paper forms that people would fill out and so forth, and you couldn't really very easily get that information into a computerized form to analyze. That's also driven just a huge growth in digital data. And so people are saying, you know, I can't, I, I no longer can just load something into a spreadsheet and, I, and eyeball it. I need analytical systems to do that um, sort of sifting and analyzing the data. Um, and by the way, that's another reason that organizations are looking at cloud computing, which is the sheer scale of infrastructure required to achieve um, good results with analytics or data warehousing today, as opposed to 20 years ago, there's much less data today, there's 10X, 100X kinds of data. And it's not that easy to get to get all of that equipment, to get it installed, to get it you know configured, to get it connected. Cloud computing enables that very easily. And so, that's another driver for adopting cloud. But the general sort of trend is that there's more digital data available. There's more ways to apply analytics across that data to every dimension of the of a, co a company or organization. And a desire to get uh, insights to operate more efficiently. That's, that's sort of the big picture on data warehousing and cloud computing. they make is they're typically then going to be able to operate no more quickly than they can you know go through that process I mentioned of you know obtaining equipment getting it installed and that's a very lengthy process because it's at the scale of these kinds of things it's not like you're just going down to you know a local store and picking up a laptop or a server they typically require very large um, install constructs so you have to go through a business case development and then you have to do a budget then you have to submit the budget and get into the capital request and you know that's a very lengthy process then you could maybe order the equipment you often hear from um, organizations that takes a long time 
to get that and then it's got to be installed configured connected etc etc um you know this typically can take you know up to a year that's the opportunity cost which is if you decide to go that route you sort of said i'm willing to wait a year before i start getting any analytics available through through um through data warehousing or through you know some sort of you know uh uh, number you know number crunching etc and you know you're so the you know the opportunity cost is the sacrifice of what that those insights could have gained you over the course of that year while you're waiting to uh, be able to start work in an on-premises environment well we've sort of this conversation is sort of focused on you know what i would always suggest first which is to identify the use cases within the company that would most benefit from immediate access to resources or need access to large scale of resources and that have a high value. So, you know, good matches for um, uh, cloud computing. And oftentimes within organizations, it's new applications. So, you know, are we developing something new? Where should we place that? For many uh, of applications, you know, that you're starting now, you definitely should apply. Uh, you know, apply cloud computing to to those applications. Um, you know, and then um, once you've identified that, then you sort of have to start, you know, kind of the roll up your sleeves and do the heavy lifting of, well, you know, what, what cloud computing environment are we going to place it into? What kind of architecture would it require? What are the ways that we're going to design and build this application? How are we going to get data into it? You know, um, what, how the applications, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, there's no shortcut to building the applications. That still requires work of, you know, architects, developers, product managers commonly, um, and so forth to collaborate and design the application that can operate in, in a cloud environment. Well, um, I'm, you know, uh, I'm sorry to say that this way, but I'm not sure there is one single best approach. But, um, you know, the, the, the cliche about data is that it has gravity, which means once it's created, it's very difficult to migrate it somewhere else. You, you can do it, no doubt about it. But even if you do that, that itself is a significant engineering effort and goes, it would need to go through what I talked about in terms of the architecture, developer, and so forth. <coughs> you need to create... Um, a strategy and a plan to do that. Um, another alternative is rather than move the data, is to move the processing or the access to that data. So you could say, I'm going to, um, particularly there are direct connect mechanisms, that's the Amazon name for this, but it's basically a very high speed network link between a cloud computing environment and a let's say an on-premises computing environment or a co-location environment where a enterprise might have placed its uh, app, you know it's uh, some applications and you can leverage those high bandwidth to direct connections direct connectivity and really have the applications that might be cloud-based reach across that that high bandwidth connection to pull data out of the location this is a very you know this is a distributed kind of analytics and it's now technically possible, and that's a very good approach as well. If you do not want to or can't, you know, do a uh, migration strategy to move the data to its location. Uh, that approach also has the benefit of the challenge with doing a one-time up, you know, movement of, of data to into a um, into a separate environment is it tends to go stale, and as new data flows into the original system, that does not flow through that does not then get synced to the extract that was done at a certain point in time. And you're, it's, you know, there's a challenge with operating with not all of the latest data. And this sort of distributed approach that I've uh, briefly outlined can address that and make sure, ensure that you're, you know, looking at the very latest, that you can incorporate the very latest data into your analytics. Well, I mean, there's an entire um, uh, you know 
uh, industry around this, you know, ETL, extract, transform, and load. There's yeah. extract, there's extract, load, and transform, which is kind of like move it and then, and then sort through it. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, it's a, it's a, it is a real challenge because as the cliche goes, garbage in, garbage out. You've got terrible right. data and it's not, you know, um, clean. Um, that's a, uh, that's a challenge. And it's something that's got to be addressed. You got to figure that out. And, and, you know, again, I wish there were easy answers, but this is again, you know, sort of an effort. How do we ensure data quality? Um, yeah. I do want to say this is not new or unique to cloud computing. This is mm-hmm. traditionally and long time been an issue. How do we ensure that we've got accurate data? How do we ensure that the data is consistent in the different kinds of, um, uh, you know, places it goes and you know the stories are legion of companies that have eight different records for a single customer each of which lists a slightly different name and you know has the address somewhat differently and then it's difficult to sort of go you know Bernard Golden here is the same person as B Golden there in those two different systems and you know that kind of uh, effort is you know it's 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 not new, so it's not mm. unique, um, mm. but it is pressing to address. And as companies are in, engaging in more analytics, they sort of got to, um, you know, plan for and take that on as part of the overall analytics um, effort that they are undertaking. Well, I don't think that you, I, I, I wouldn't suggest an automatic decision to rewrite. Uh, you know, you sh- the existing data pipelines need to be analyzed and then mapped against what can be, how applicable they are to a cloud environment. And is there some way, you know, so the first thing is, it, can it be used unchanged? That's That would be ideal. Unfortunately, it's not very common either. But, you know, you would then uh, look and say, you know, is there a way for us to um, append something onto the system that can then locate it, you know, migrate it into the cloud, or does it require more significant rework? Do we need to incorporate different products as in within that the scope of the pipeline? Because maybe you know the uh, one the one of the components in the pipeline isn't available or can't be licensed or can't be supported in in a cloud environment. And, you know, it's just a continuum of, of, of light touch all the way up to, you know, s- throw away and start from scratch. It requires, you know, definitely a, an architect and somebody who's familiar with cloud computing environments <coughs> to analyze the existing pipeline and say, you know, what can be kept, what needs to be replaced, what is the way that we um, impl- implement that within a cloud environment or connected to a cloud environment, and you know, and so forth. So, um, you know, all of this is software and subject to needing to be designed and operated in the environment to which it's suited or that, to which it's deployed. Yeah. And, you know, that requires, you know, architectural type um, skills and um, engineering kinds of efforts. I guess it's kind of it's kind of both it's gotten easier and it's gotten harder yeah. and the reason it's gotten easier is there's a whole suite of tools that the analytics industry has developed yeah. to assist this and so you know um, you know even five years ago if you set out to do this kind of work you would end up doing a lot of heavy lifting how do I connect these things together how I have to integrate them I have to have you know kind of I have to have plumbers on staff, so to speak, to, you know, connect all the pipes and all that. Lots of products have come from both the cloud providers and um, other other software providers that ease that because they're pre-integrated. They're already connected up. Uh, they already work together. So, you know, it's, it's a much easier than it used to be, which is fantastic. Um, and the reason I said it's more difficult uh, isn't because of the tooling. That's made it much easier but because of the volumes and you know the volume of data of course always makes it 
more challenging to manage to you know track and so forth so it's sort of a you know on the one hand and on the other hand but you know generally speaking from the perspective of creating a solution it's much easier today than it was say five years ago automation is absolutely crucial you you know you can't um, you know trying to trying to sort of control this manually or even have some sort of like you know an occasional um, sync just doesn't can't isn't a good match to the way data is created and the volumes that data is created you have to take humans out of the equation and have the system do it in an automated fashion. And as I said, there's a whole range of tools that have come out to facilitate that. And you really need to take, take advantage of them. Um, if you don't, you know, you're gonna be, um, you know, just consigned to a solution of a, of a previous era of data, you know, data analytics, data warehousing, whatever you wanna call it.